You're listening to the Valley Labor Report with David Story and Jacob Morrison. David, let, let's just let's talk about the strike. Let's talk about the interviews some, um, and, and and talk about some of the things that we talked about. And and you know, um, since we were we were anticipating, you know, having two or three segments of, of interviews. Um, if you uh, folks, if you want to call in, make do that feel free we're going to have we're going to have more time than anticipated today so 18664949866 that's 18664949wvnn if you'd like to call in um but yeah david why don't you uh why don't you give us um why, why don't you give us a little bit of a uh a little bit of a rundown of of what's been going on up there oh, yeah. sorry i'm still over here trying to get that audio working uh yeah well i mean they they were what the the crux of it was uh like you said they have four over four thousand three hundred members they the company is uh it's bath ironworks which builds Mm -hmm. uh navy ships you know uh some of the some of the largest ships in the world and they general dynamics had is well known in this industry not just in uh you know in uh, the ship building but also in aerospace as well uh we know very well because we've got a lot of members that uh that work with us that are from general dynamics but they're very well known mm-hmm. for the tactic that they use to break unions constantly i mean right. one of the reasons why we are in Decatur. Why my membership is in Decatur building the, what we are is the fact that General Dynamics done their best early on to, to outsource everything, uh, not only them, but several other companies, but to outsource everything to Alabama and the hopes mm-hmm. that, you know, all of these, uh, and it's right to work state and all of these people that they didn't realize had such a strong labor history uh, would not form a union. Uh, so mm-hmm. luckily, luckily, uh, in the early stages of, of our plant, we we were brought in with the machinist union. But uh, to get back to uh, S6, they they knew going in that it was going to be difficult because the work group is divided so much between a very uh, older, and I, when I say older, I mean you know people like John that mm-hmm. had 30 40 years out there on the on the uh shipbuilding experience and then a lot of the younger folks and 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 you know it speaks to this uh what john talked about with the two-tier wage system that got through in one of the previous contracts they've divided that workforce up to where mm-hmm. the old hands are making a pretty good money and the new hands are are being brought in at a fairly low wage so uh that's one of the tactics is they, that they use, and right. so going in, they realized that they were going. It was going to be an uphill battle, but they didn't realize where what the company was going to try to come after as far as seniority rights. You know, and mm-hmm. one of the things that I talked to the uh, business rep about up there was the fact that, you know, you've got these folks that you got it, highly skilled welders. Uh, highly highly skilled guys like John that was doing his job and I'm sure Levi as well even though he didn't mention what he was doing uh, that ha- that are the they have an expertise a very good expertise but they're also strong union activists right. and the what the company was wanting to do was if if for example you know they have they the janitors or the you know what have you are are union labor as well they to the point to where the company wanted to not worry about seniority if this guy had 40 years out here on the on the on uh, in the plant they would be able to shift them up to i think it was up to two years it may have just been one but i think it was two years cleaning toilets for for the next two years and like (laughs) we talked about that don't make good business sense you know you knew it didn't make good business sense when you heard it i you know everybody knows it but doesn't make good businesses but the problem is these companies have more money than they have since they don't really care about what makes good business sense or not they care about busting the union up 
Right. And that is that's a- exactly, and that's from the from the business sense that that is where they're thinking that they might can make it up is because uh, they want to they want to be able to bust the union, they want to be able to destroy worker power, and if it costs them a buck in in in, in the short term, uh, you know they want to be able they think they they can make it up in the long term, um, but. And another thing, and, and like you talked about with trying to subcontract out work to Alabama, um, that was another big thing. Like like seniority, you know, being able to say like, no, I'm I'm a 50 year uh, structural engineer or a welder or something. You're not going to put me on like paint duty or cleaning toilets or something like that's stupid. You know. Uh, but the second thing was subcontracting, and they were trying to subcontract out a significant amount of the work and uh what and, and they were talking about how poor a job these subcontractors were doing they were coming up there and they were and the union folks were having to redo everything that they did because they didn't they weren't making things up to the navy specs they weren't doing i mean they just weren't they weren't doing anything right and they were having to there was so much rework that was having to happen um and and why were they willing to eat so much cost and in, in rework? Why were they willing to? Uh, why were they willing to eat so much cost putting a highly specialized uh, person with a lot of experience welding on toilet duty? Because they wanted to bust the union. That that's why they wanted to bust the union. They wanted to destroy worker power. And that, that's the, that's, you know, that's the alpha and omega of the thing. That's the beginning and the end of, of the thing is that they, they wanted to bust the union. But the good news is, is that this union was strong. Um, they were able to build solidarity across some of these, um, across some of these divides between the old and the, and the young folks and uh, come together and they were able to win a good contract. They saved their seniority. They saved their, um, and they saved their subcontracting stuff. So it's great. All right, folks, welcome back to the Valley Labor Report. My name is Jacob Morrison here with my co-host, David Story. Um, we've been talking about uh, we've been talking about Labor Day, been talking about the Bath Iron Works strike um, and and where we left off. We were talking about what they won. And, and you know, the two big issues were um, they wanted to protect their seniority, um, which which, you know, basically says that. I'm a 50 year uh, super experienced welder. You can't go make me clean toilets and you can't throw me on third shift if I don't want to go on third shift, which I think you've earned after 50 years of service at a company and uh, subcontracting that they're not going to subcontract out work to outside of the company, which means non-union labor, which means cheaper labor and which often means um, not as good quality labor. But they did also win a, and this wasn't one of the main things, but they still won a big raise. They won a 3% per year raise for every year of the contract, which is like three years, um, which that's significant. Like 3% every year for three years, that's that's a good raise schedule, I think. Um, And especially the fact that like that wasn't even one of the main things they were concerned about. That, that goes to show like how powerful their strike was that they got both of the things that they were super concerned about and they got another thing they got uh, these you know pretty substantial raises for everybody um, and and you know I think that really goes to show you like how powerful how powerful having a union is in your workplace and how much how much more leverage it brings you um you know because like if you go if you go up somewhere and you're like um yeah i'm not uh uh i, I i'm personally not working unless you give me three percent raises per year for the next three years and you give me seniority and you give me and, and you won't like subcontract out my work to anybody like you don't have the leverage to do that but like a union of working people a union of people that are willing to stand and fight for each other you can get that you you are you know you're the one who makes things happen right like this is one of the things that i that i always talk to people to kind of like wake them up is that um would ha- what would happen in your place of work if your boss left tomorrow like just something crazy happened and like they had to move and um or or maybe they died or uh or, or for for whatever reason your boss just wasn't at work tomorrow would your workplace still be able to function 
Of course it would. Of course it would. In almost every circumstance, you are going to be able to do your job without your boss looking over your shoulder. And in a lot of circumstances, you can do it better. Okay. Now, the second question is, what happens if all of the workers are gone tomorrow? What happens if everybody who's not a supervisor is gone tomorrow, right? The work doesn't get done. They supervise work not getting done. And so having a union, that collective bargaining power that brings all of that power that all the workers have together Right, Because you don't have that much power as an individual in, in your workplace, but you have so much power if you come together and you fight for each other. That's, that, you know, that, that's what we're talking about, and that's what these folks were able to win up in Maine. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a great story. I, I'm so happy that things worked out well for them. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I, I, hope, I hope folks take courage from it, and I hope folks do go and listen to the interviews. They're really, really good, and I really hate that we weren't able to, sh- uh, to put them out on, uh, over the radio this weekend um, because they are really good. So, so make sure that you're subscribed to us on YouTube at The Valley Labor Report or you're supporting us on Patreon, and we're going to get those interviews out as soon as we can. Um, and if you want to talk to us about the strike or about Labor Day or about anything else, give us a call, one uh, 866 that is one eight six six four nine four WVNN. Um, and one of the, you know, one of the things that 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 they won from that that you didn't touch on, and I think is very important, is they they built the solidarity across mm-hmm. all those age groups, across all those classifications, and across all those workers to come together and work as one cohesive unit and make a demand on the company that that they felt was was fair and just and right you know because a lot of times we talk about the we talk about the wages we talk about uh you know the seniority we talk about maybe a retirement and health care benefits and things like that but rarely do we talk about the one thing that's so important uh of every union and that's building that solidarity. Mm-hmm. When I say solidarity, a lot of folks out there may not may, may be listening that don't understand what solidarity is because you know we tend to throw that that term around pretty easily. But you know the solidarity mm-hmm. is is bringing everybody together under one big tent and and everyone having the same goal, everyone having the same uh, mindset. Uh, this is what we want. And we're not going to give up till we get it because you know as it's it's wonderful that they won no nobody ever wants to go into contract negotiations or even come out of contract negotiations as far as that goes with with a strike as the main purpose of uh, Mm -hmm. what uh, the main goal of what we're trying to accomplish i mean we the the main goal is to sit down with the company and negotiate fair wages fair benefits you know fair working conditions and everybody walk away happy the, but the problem is what we've gotten into the past 20 or 30 years ever since basically the patco uh terminations is the companies have realized let's just force them out and try to break their spirit and mm-hmm. we'll make more money and so you know at the, building that solidarity that cohesiveness man that's it's what and and i guarantee you i guarantee you when they go into negotiations on, on their next contract, the company will absolutely take them serious because this is yeah. it, it's the same thing that happened to us in 05 when we went out on strike for retiree health care. They, 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 I mean, something as simple as the new hires aren't going to get retiree health care from this point on, but we'll let all of you old hands that's already here continue to keep your retiree health care well that's mm-hmm. so, that is a that if there is ever a union breaking proposition it's dividing up the this group against all the new group coming in they struck for 93 days on the picket line and i can tell you wow. 93 days three months yeah. without a paycheck three months without health insurance trying to support families is 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 an absolute heartbreak mm-hmm. when we come back off of that strike on the next contract negotiations 
everybody across the board averaged over five dollar an hour pay increases right so you know once once you get to that point where the company if you don't strike the company mm-hmm. quits taking you serious because that's the only truly that's the only effective uh a measure direct action that you've got to make them realize we're not going to take it anymore yeah so yeah i mean yeah i mean like um you know i'm all, i'm always repping uh jane mccalevy but she says that uh you know she talks about how direct action and the strike is like a muscle and you know if you don't use it it atrophies and uh, you get less good at it and um you know as your muscles atrophy your enemies your boss takes you less seriously you know if you if you're a union that hasn't struck in 20 years and you're trying to negotiate a contract your boss isn't going to take you as seriously because they're you know they're going to think oh well they'll, they'll never go on strike they'll take whatever i can they'll take whatever i give them and especially that's especially the case in a non-union workplace because you don't have you don't have any means by which to defend yourself so you have to exercise you know you have to exercise your muscles right you've got to, if you're in a if you're in like a life or death situation or you're in a boxing match or something, you don't want to go without having worked out in 20 years, right? You want to train, you want to prepare, prepare, and you want to keep your muscles strong. And so, um, you know, so like, like you said, people never want to go on strike. Uh, that's never like the goal of any contract negotiations, but, um, but you know, I mean, it's an important thing to do uh, to make sure that your company is taking you seriously. Occasional, you know, it's an important thing to do occasionally to make sure that your company is taking you seriously. To make sure that you have uh, broad solidarity among the members. You know, that, that your retirees, like you said, or your almost retirees, aren't going to throw the young folks under the bus um, because, like you said, that's a union-breaking proposition. That is absolutely a union-breaking proposition. What they were trying to do is they were trying to get the retirees to vote yes on the contract and the uh, enough enough older people to vote yes on the contract that uh, the contract goes through. And and that goes to like you were saying, and we'll talk about this some more after the break. But you were talking about this in the interview. Nobody made these people go on strike. They voted to go on strike themselves. There was not some union boss in New York or D.C. that told them to go on strike. They voted to go on strike themselves, their whole uh, bargaining unit, because this contract was unfair. Uh, Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your time. Uh, If you want to see what we're up to throughout the week and get our snide quips about the news of the day, then you should follow us on social media. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Valley Labor Report. We're on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore A-L. David is on Twitter at Radical Unionist. That's spelled R-A-D-I-C-L Unionist. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there, and we also clip segments throughout the week. And we also upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So you can see if we're on your listening platform of choice, you can go to The Valley Labor Report dot transistor dot fm slash subscribe. And if you appreciate our work and want to help us stay on the air, then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report.